Hit it. Hit it. All right, it's time to get our basket weave on. No, I'm not talking about underwater basket weaving. I'm talking about basket weaving and crochet. And you complete the basket weave stitch by combining front post and back post double crochets. Join me over here. I'm going to show you how to do this. Today, we're going to be using the crochet stitch sampler baby blanket to complete this stitch pattern. And you can see here on the example that we have a nice variety of raised stitches here that look like they go underneath these horizontal lines and then back up and then underneath the horizontal and that's what gives us our cool uh, woven effect same way if you were to look at it this way that's the way it looks like it works right so you do this by stacking front post double crochets and back post double crochets for several rows and then for the next several rows you switch those up. So what used to be front post are now back post, and what used to be back post are now front post. If you do that at regular intervals, you get a look like this. This particular stitch pattern will eat up a lot of yarn, so make sure whatever yarn you're using, you do have a good amount of it. It is a wonderful stitch pattern for um, men as well as women, so once you learn how to master this, you don't have to stop just with this crochet stitch sampler blanket. You can move on and make yourselves um, a scarf or a hat or a, a full baby blanket with this. I've even seen full garments made with um, the basket weave uh, stitch used in fingering weight yarn, and it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's so pretty. So let's get started. I'm going to set the blanket aside. I'm going to show you right here. In the pattern itself, we have the in-class block chain amount that we're going to use, as well as written instructions. There is a full chart available for you with the, con with the full 20 chains um, represented down here at the bottom. If you like to read charts, I please um, I'm pleased to say that it's available for you. Today we're going to just refer to the, the written instructions because it's, it works really well for the demonstration purposes of this video. For the chain 20, I've gone ahead and I've chained 20 stitches and I've worked the first base row. So the first base row reads to skip three chains and that's going to count as the first double crochet. So I went ahead and I marked the top chain of that first or that turning chain, so the three uh, chains. Then it says double crochet in the next chain and in each chain to the end. So I have done that. I've double crocheted all the way to the end of this. So I'm ready for the pattern row one. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to chain two, and whether you chain two and turn or turn and chain two, it doesn't matter, and it says that counts as one double crochet. Again, I'm going to use my marker, I'm going to put my marker into that chain stitch that's right below my hook so that I know that that's the end of my row. Now I'm going to skip my first stitch because my chain two represents that stitch and I'm going to do a front post double crochet in the next four. If you need a refresher on the front post double crochet, there is a refresher in the beginner basics stitch section video um, right here on this channel. You can get a refresher on it, but I will show you right here real quickly how to do this. I've already completed two, but you yarn over your hook. You go in the right side of the post and out the left side, yarn over your hook, and you pull your hook straight through that very same path and complete your double crochet. What makes the post stitch, the front post or the back post double crochet different than the regular double crochet is that the placement is around these post stitches instead of these stitches up here, which makes our double crochet front post or back post actually squattier or shorter than regular double crochets, which is why we only do our chain two at the very edge to represent a double. Instead of typically we would do a chain three. This time we're only gonna do a chain two. I'm gonna yarn over my hook and it's time for my back post. I wanna make sure that I am not going through the same stitch or post that I had uh, worked previously. So make sure you're working in the next one over and you're gonna begin back post. We're gonna do four of them. So you yarn over, you come behind your work, stick your hook into the right side of the post, come back out the left side of the post, yarn over and then bring your hook back through that same path, making sure when your hook comes up, it comes towards you. So that's two, I'm gonna do a couple more. You can see as you get going along, it becomes really rhythmic. You can get this going. You get these nice little ridges. Can you see this ridge, see that horizontal ridge? That's what I was showing you before on the example. 
um, that's how you get those ribs. So here we are, we're going back to the four front post stitches right here. We're gonna work those side by side, just right next to each other, not doing anything different. If we were to alternate these, one front post, one back post, one front post, one back post, we'd get a completely different stitch pattern. That would be the um, crocheted rib pattern. Uh, if you need a refresher on that or you would like to learn how to do that, there is a video available for that right here on this channel as well. See, I've got all the good videos. You don't have to go anywhere else. You can stay right here. It's Marley Bird all the time. Can't get enough. All right, so I'm here. I'm at the very last double crochet. So I've done my four back, but I have my marker right here. So I know that that's my actual last stitch. Well, on my last stitch, I don't want to do a post stitch. I want to do just a normal old double crochet. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it have a nice clean edging for me from either side of this, okay? Now, in the pattern, it says you would repeat this row for rows two, three, and four. All right, so let's go ahead and repeat this row. But here's something really cool, you ready? If you didn't wanna go back and look at your instructions, you can't remember, okay, do I start with the front post or do I start with the back post? After you chain you, your, your chain two and turn, first move, oops, I dropped my hook. Move your marker up so that it's underneath the, the loop that's on your hook, okay? So I move my marker up. Now, what am I looking at? I'm obviously looking at front post stitches, right? And then over here, I'm looking at back post stitches. If you're looking at front post stitches, that is your clue that you have to work front post stitches now. Remember when I said we're gonna stack our post stitches? This is exactly what I mean. Don't think about what you did before, because obviously we finished with back post stitches, right? but a back post stitch looks like a front post stitch on the opposite side, and that's what we're running into right now. If you're a knitter, it's the exact same thing as if you were looking at knit stitches and the reverse side, you'd look at purl stitches. We did back post, and now we're looking at front post. So we know without having to look at our pattern that we need to do front post stitches. Do you see how that works and see how they're stacking on each other? Now I'm gonna snag my yarn a little bit because it's running out on me. Once again, I'm gonna remind you, this eats up a lot of yarn. I'm gonna do the back. When you come into the back post stitch on the second row, make sure you're actually working into that second row of, of, of double crochets. So the post stitch double crochet and not down here. So I'm going into the right side, out the left side, yarn over, pulling a loop back through and completing my double crochet. One more time, in the right, out the left, grab, come back through. Give yourself a little bit of a break if it's a little difficult at the beginning. I know the first couple times I did this, it was really tricky. Um, then all of a sudden, like things just click and you'll get the hang of it. I, I promise you will do that. So I've done the back post right there. Now it's time to switch and do front post, right? So I yarn over and I'm back here to the front post and I'm looking at front post. So that's like my, my double check check. I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm gonna go along, all right? So I would finish the whole row like this. Now I'm gonna jump ahead in the pattern a little bit just for time purposes, if that's all right with you guys. I don't figure you wanna sit here and watch me do this exact same thing one more time. But I wanna show you what it looks like when you have to change with, uh, the back post to the front post, the front post to the back post. So I'll, and I know that that sounds like, you know, tomato, tomato, what are you talking about, Marley? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do more than tell you. I'm gonna show you which is fun. I'm loving this YouTube channel thing. This is just really great being able to show you guys how to do these stitches. And you're able to look down at my hands just as I'm able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm yarning over. I'm down here at the end. I have it marked already. So I'm gonna finish off with my double crochet right there. So if I were to set this down, you can already see the basket trying to start. So now we're gonna make it to where it becomes that woven look, all right? So just like before, I'm gonna grab some yarn here. Just like before, we're gonna begin with the chain two. Turn, we're gonna move our marker up so that we know where our stitch is because it just makes life so much easier to not have to decide later on where that stitch is gonna go. Now knowing I have to skip my first one, I'm going into this one. If this were a regular row, which is in the pattern, this would be another, 
another basic row and I would do four front posts and then four back posts, but I'm skipping ahead. When it's time to change and make these front post stitches, back post stitches, that's all you do. If I'm looking at front post, I'm gonna create those into back posts. So I'm yarning over, I'm coming behind, and I'm working my stitch into the post. That's all it is, you guys. Isn't that so easy? It's just the placement of the stitch. Just, and it makes sense. It's like a checkerboard. You're gonna create some stitches that are front posts, like this whole little square section, and then you have a whole other square section that are all back posts. So it's like the front posts are red and the back posts are black, and then they move along, all right? So I've done my, my back post now, but now these back posts need to be switched to front post. So I come around and I create those, turn those into front post. So what this is going to do is it's gonna alternate the look of the stitches, which is what gives you the woven look. So if you do this in a precise manner, the way it's written out, you'll get this awesome look. Isn't it cool? I'll set this down so you guys can take a look at this real quick. Set it down. See how right here we have these nice horizontal lines? Those were back post stitches when we were working them down here. But now that I was changing them up and I'm making them into front post stitches, it begins to look like, oh, I have front post coming up. And then when I change them again to back post, it'll look like those are recessed behind the back post. Can you see how that works? It's kind of really neat. I think this is a fun stitch pattern to learn. I think it's, um, this is very versatile, and so the basket weave square, I mean, this is great for the square of the blanket, but you can use it for all sorts of projects. And now it's a wonderful tool to have in your crocheter's toolbox.